Are you ready to learn about type aliases in Kotlin? Type aliases are a really interesting language feature in Kotlin that allow us to take an existing type and then provide or really mask that type using a different label. So let's demonstrate a basic example of how we can use a type alias. If we look at this file here, we'll see we have a number of places where we are using the type list of user. So we see it here when we're returning it, we're then taking a parameter value of that type. One way in which we could use a type alias then is to create a label around this type, which we can then substitute in to make the code shorter to read or more semantic and easier to understand. So to do that, we can say type alias, we'll give it a name, in this case, user list equals list of user. So we now have this type alias called user list that is a substitution for a list of users. So we can now apply that to these functions where that type is being used. And we see the code is still perfectly compiling. You also notice if we start to type out a function using that type, we actually see that in the autocomplete. So here we see that we need to pass in a user list and then as a little comment here in line, it actually shows us the expanded version of what that type alias represents. Now this is useful for other larger types as well. So if we go into this function here, we'll see that we have this map of string of list of user. Well, right off the bat, we could actually apply our user list type alias again here. So that has made this a little bit easier to understand, but we could actually take this one step further and we could create another type alias called interest map. And we can now substitute that in. So now we're actually creating a type alias based on another type alias and the code is now much easier to write. And it's also not as confusing to start seeing all of those templates and generics in place. Now, if we look at interest map, we see very clearly it's a map of string and then a user list. We actually don't need to care in this sense what user list is. And we could take this one last step further and use the first type alias here. Now this file is largely independent of those underlying types. We could change out user list and to some extent and still be able to use that. And we can now use our map as well without having to write out and understand that it is a map of string to then a list of type user. It's all just much simpler and more consolidated. Now another place where type aliases can come in handy is in providing useful names around functions passed into other functions. So maybe that is a function that returns a Boolean. You could rename that to predicate or some other meaningful name. Or in this case, we'll see that we have a click handler variable of type function that takes in a user and returns unit. So we could create a type alias then around this called user click handler equals we use that type and then now again we can use that type alias when defining our variables and our arguments now when we look at this function this reads much more easily than the previous version that put in the the signature of the function itself it's much easier to quickly scan this and understand, okay, this is some type of click handler related to a user. You don't have to actually parse the individual pieces and understand, okay, this is a function that takes a user, returns a unit. You just can kind of abstract away that information until you absolutely need it, which can be really useful. Hopefully this has shown you how you can use type aliases to write less code, to mask unmeaningful names with ones that make sense 
for your use cases and for your code base and how you can just simplify the code that you write. Thanks for watching.